Today was quite a special day uh, in many ways. That big white rhino bull that um, we did today, I treated him for a gunshot wound in, uh, four weeks ago, and he'd been shot through his upper chest area, which had just gone through the top of his spine, but missed the spinal cord. And we filled him up with antibiotics, treated the wound and flushed and cleaned. And he's done nothing but get better and better ever since. Today was really a follow-up on the wound, first of all, and secondly, the reason they went for him was for that huge regrowth that he'd had. He's had been nearly two years since he was dehorned last. Poachers want rhino horn. That's what they want. It's the only thing they take. They shoot those animals, they chop off their horns, and they leave what's left behind. It's been completely eye-opening for me. Coming here and seeing how saving wildlife affects communities in the surrounding conservation areas. So Wildens focuses on nurturing sustainable communities and nurturing sustainable environments. So the northern KwaZulu-Natal area is one of the most important rhino habitats in the country. It is home to the second largest population. It also borders on Mozambique, so it is heavily threatened. We've really had to get quite focused and determined about protecting the animals. Dehorning on its own is certainly not the answer to anything. Our security um, services are as much as most reserves can afford. So then we've got to reduce the potential benefit or gain to the poacher. And the only way to do that is to remove the actual horn itself. We literally used to tip the horns rather than remove the entire horn. And then today we decided we would do it in the more modern fashion, which is far less attractive to poachers as such. We flew off, very easily located the tracking team who pointed us in the direction of, of the big bull. We waited for the ground crew, obviously, to be in a position to, to help us. We darted him with no complications, and within five minutes, I was able to get a blindfold on him. For me and for people like me, you see pictures of rhinos, and you're like, oh yeah, that's a big animal, and then you get there and you feel like an ant. We swung him around so that he was across the slope. That aids with the breeding. As soon as he was stable, I gave him some oxygen supplementation. We were then able to look at the horn, make a decision as to what needed to be cut off with the chainsaw. The big piece first, as you can see, it's tough. It is a brutal intervention. It is heartbreaking to see an animal that should have the most spectacular, the most magnificent horn. That's what characterizes a rhino. Walking around without it is tragic. You know, when you're on social media, you see a lot of uh, the anti-poaching stuff going on. And so a lot of people post the gory photos of the rhinos. And so I think I kind of went in preparing myself to see something like that. The whole process of it wasn't as traumatic as I thought it was going to be. Um, and it happened really quickly. I felt like the rhino was in the best hands possible. I felt that everyone who had a hand on that rhino was an expert, and their cause was for the betterment of that specific animal. It's a pretty brutal way of doing it, but at the end of the day, the end result was a pretty clean uh, affair. And it doesn't really worry them much. They, it does not appear to have any effect on them. And as you saw at the end, we pushed him over onto his side, and when he got up, he got up very comfortably, sniffed around for a few minutes, and then trotted off. For the last century, we've been able to focus on really just breeding up numbers from around about 40 in 1900 to well over 22, 23,000 by 2000. It's taking a preventative approach. It's before the problem starts, let's fix it now and so that we don't have to find a dead rhino. You can see not only the skills go into it, but you can see the passion and the emotion. It's about protecting what we have. We have done the impossible before, and as we stand here now, we'll do it again.